Well, good morning. It's a rainy Monday morning. I uh, wasn't able to sit necessarily with everything opened up, but uh, thankfully for this, for the Shelby, she bought this tarp that we have on the back porch, not a tarp, but some kind of covering, and uh, it's able to keep me dry, so it's nice to be able to come out even when it's still raining. I want to get a head start on the week um, and jump right into uh, our normal lesson of Josh, the Joshua Code, L.S. Hawkins, 52 scriptures that every Christian should know, and uh, get started on that. John 13, 34 is our verse for this week. It's called the New Commandment, and uh, it says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. <clears throat> now, it sounds a lot like last week's verse. Um, and we know the old commandment that uh, uh, was back in the uh, Old Testament was to love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then he said, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then today's um, verse is this one that says, a new commandment. And I don't know, I, I didn't do great in chemistry. I don't know if y'all did or not. But um, I, in high school, I kind of just goofed around with it and didn't learn a whole lot. College, I did better, did pretty good. But there was these little pieces, uh, strips of paper about this long and about this wide that oftentimes when we were uh, trying to test how much acid was in something, <clears throat> We would take them and dip it in there and it changed to a certain color. It was called litmus paper. And now that has become known as the litmus test. Uh, and so we use it kind of generally speaking over a lot of different areas now, even though what it does is test acid in, in different substances. Now, what is the litmus test for Christianity though? That, that's kind of the idea today. And he says the litmus test for Christianity is, do we love? Love is the litmus test. It is what uh, uh, tells us. It's, it's not just a virtue of the Christian life. It is the Christian life. And, and a lot of times we find that hard to do. We think that, oh man, how can we love everyone? Um, and um, it, it, it is difficult. It's a difficult concept to think about loving everyone, love, do good to your enemies, all those things. <laughs> And so, but we'll talk about that in a moment. <clears throat> but the, the challenge is to uh, uh, love as Jesus had love. And so let's look at this for just a moment uh, as we uh, jump right into this. It's a new, a new rule is that this is a commandment. I guess if you think about the when somebody said, what are the commandments of God? We always turn back to Exodus 20 or Deuteronomy 20, and we, we talk about the Ten Commandments. We talk about uh, those things, <clears throat> uh, you, you know, uh, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, bear false witness, commit adultery, covet, uh, all those things, uh, honor your father and mother, love, no other gods, no graven images, <clears throat> don't take the Lord's name in vain. Those kind of things we think, <clears throat> remember the Sabbath, we think, oh, that's the Ten Commandments. Uh, but it is the commandments of God, yes, and it is our standards, but just in the same way, Jesus puts out a new commandment. It's not like he was just leaving and, and thought, well, maybe I'll, su I'll suggest this as a way to live. It, it carries the same, when he says a new commandment, it carries the same weight as the Ten Commandments. It, it comes from the same Godhead, all those things. It comes and it carries that same weight. And so when we look at it like that, it changes or should change our perspective on what this verse is saying because it is a commandment of Jesus himself. And it's, it's a new commandment to kind of supersede uh, what was there. And you think, well, well, the one that was there was pretty good. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And yes, that's a good, uh, it, it is a good uh, commandment, but think about this. And I've thought about this before. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And self-love is sometimes uh, 
fickle. That's an old word, but <clears throat> it, it changes. It can change because of a person's circumstances, because of uh, the conduct going on, situation, what your social standing is, what's going on around you. Um, some people have issues with loving themselves, and so how do they how do they know how to love others in the way that they're supposed to when they <clears throat> are struggling to love themselves? And so it has a little bit of a a fault in it, not in the, the challenge of the scripture, but in our ability to carry it out effectively. And so this is a new rule. Jesus is leaving a new rule that we love, not just as we love ourselves, but as Christ loved us, that you love one another as I have loved you. He's left the example. And so we have a new rule and we have a natural reaction to that <clears throat> is we think, now I can't do that. There's no way I can love as Jesus loved other people. I, I just cannot, I'm incapable of do that, doing that. And on our own, we are incapable of doing that. Um, it, it, because how did Jesus love? Well, his love was unlimited. He said, look, uh, need, width and length and depth and height, it, 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 no one it doesn't know the bounds of his love it, it's great it expansive uh, in Romans 8 39 he expressed it that way uh, and, and so we understand that man nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus and so it's an unlimited love that he has for us so we got to know that if I'm gonna love people as he loved then it's an unlimited love I don't hold it out I, I just let it flow, man. I, I, it's like those tea pitchers, you know. It's got the little thing on the bottom. It never, and, and you pour in from the top. It's like God's love is pouring in from the top, and our spigot is just always open, unlimited. It never stops; just keeps running, and unconditional. Take that same tea pitcher, for instance, and and you say, well, I'll, I'll give this person some because they've been good, or the way they act, or I, I, I like them. I'm not going to give this person any because they acted uh, mean or ugly or uh, they're not doing what I say. Uh, no, it's unconditional. It's an unconditional love. Not only is it unlimited, but it's unconditional. Uh, he said, look, he demonstrated his love to us even while we were yet sinners. He gave us out, gave out his love. In, in Romans 5, 8, we see that. It's unselfish love. Why do we know that? Because he took himself to the cross. And he said, look, I would rather not do this. He even prayed, God, look, if I, I'd rather you take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. So it's an unselfish love that he uh, gave out here and an unchangeable love. It, 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 love's not going to change. It's going to continue to remain. <clears throat> Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As we see in Hebrews chapter 13, 8. Therefore, when we look at this, we say, man, I need to love as Christ loved. Okay, well, his love was uh, way beyond what I can do. It was unlimited. It was unconditional. It was unselfish. It was unchangeable. And I can't do that on my own. And so here's the challenge is to allow God to love others through you. Just be a conduit for him to use. When you don't feel good, just allow God to hopefully use you to be that conduit. We love others because he loved us. And he also commanded us to love others. Now, sometimes we look at people and we think, I, I don't really love you. I don't really like you even. And so it makes it difficult. So here's what we do. Our love then for the Father is what drives that action toward them because we love the father we obey him and we show love to those who we have trouble loving at this time we show love we express love <clears throat> we allow God to express it through us even while you say Tim that might be a little fake and I, you know what, I understand what you're saying there, but uh, when we love and we allow God to love through us, you might find out that it might turn into something real 
and, and might have a relationship with that person. They might come to know Christ. And so, hey, we have um, an assurance of salvation in a way because it says, look, hey, we know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren, 1 John 3, 4. So when we love our fellow Christians, it shows that, man, I see the love of God passing on through my life. Therefore, I know I've passed from death unto life. So this week, love the Christians, love those that are not a Christian. <clears throat> Allow God to love through you. He sent his son to us. That's what love did. He sent his son to die for us. He demonstrated that love toward us. And therefore, as we memorize this verse this week, be able to um, maybe apply it to our life, to a situation um, in, in whatever's going on. Maybe you encounter somebody and just know this, that it's a new commandment. He says, and a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. John chapter 13, 34. Have a great day.